Good morning everyone. Today I will start embryology of the cardiovascular system. Heart is the first organ which starts functioning in our body and uh, it starts beating on the 22nd day of intrauterine life. Heart and all the blood vessels are mesodermal in origin and they develop from splanchnopleuric mesoderm. Initial first two weeks it, it uh, fetus uh, receives its nutrition by diffusion and after second week uh, this is uh, not sufficient by diffusion so u to placental circulation starts and uh, in the embryo and uh, in the extraembryonic structures blood vessels start to forming now formation of the cardiac wall three walls of the heart uh, endocardium myocardium and epicardium endocardium develops from endothelial heart tube and myocardium and epicardium both develops from the myoepicardial mantle and how the myoepicardial mantle is formed it is forming by splanchnopleuric mesoderm and uh, pericardial cavity it is a part of the intraembryonic coelom here we can see the endothelial heart tube and cardiac jelly which is secreted by the developing myocardium and the myoepicardial mantle this Myoepicardial mantle will form the myocardium and epicardium, and endothelial heart tube will form the endocardium of the heart. And intraembryonic coelom will be formed by the it will form the pericardial cavity. Now the cardiogenic area. Cardiogenic area is formed by the splanchnopleuric mesoderm, and it is present at the cranial end of the embryo. Here you can see the cranial end of the embryo. This is the cranial end and this is the caudal end. At the cranial end of the embryo, you can see the septum transversum, and just caudal to the septum transversum, you can see the cardiogenic area. So we can say that uh, this cardiogenic area is present between septum transversum and procaudal plate. And this cardiogenic area, it is arranged in horseshoe shape manner. at the cranial end of the embryo just caudal to the septum transversum here you can see the cranial and the caudal end of the embryo this heart tube this uh, this is the cranial end and this one is the caudal end so at the cranial end you can see the heart tube and the pericardial cavity and you can see that uh, at this diagram is before head folding so before head folding this heart tube is in lie in the floor of the pericardial cavity but after folding uh, this heart tube will uh, lie in the roof of the pericardial cavity now formation of the heart tube and its subdivisions initially uh, cardiogenic in the cardiogenic area this uh, mesenchymal cells they condense and they form the cardiogenic cords two cardiogenic cords are formed and they canalize and they will form the endothelial heart tube now two endothelial heart tube will fuse cranio caudally from head to uh, from cranial to caudal they will start fusing from cranial to caudal end and then but the caudal end remain unfused you can see the caudal end remain bifurcated so these two endothelial heart tube uh, start fusing cranial to caudal but the caudal end remain unfused so bifurcated caudal end is there okay and primitive single primitive heart tube has been formed now Devel uh, there will be development of five embryonic dilatation uh, or the five subdivisions of the embryonic heart tube cranial end is called as a uh, truncus arteriosus then caudal to it is the bulbous cordis then primitive ventricle primitive atrium and the sinus venosus or we can say there are two ends of the heart tube cranial end and the caudal end uh, the cranial end or the distal end is a uh, arterial end that is called as truncus arteriosus and the caudal end or the distal end is called as venous end or the sinus venosus so cranial end is the arterial end distal end is arterial end and the proximal end is the venous end that is called as sinus venosus now the all the veins open into atrium so 
next to the sinus venosus will be the primitive atrium then uh, <coughs> primitive ventricle and then the bulbous cordis and truncus arteriosus and uh, here you can see uh, that to, um, is in some books it is uh, given that bulbous cordis and truncus arteriosus uh, in according to some books bulbous cordis has three parts it has been divided into three parts proximal one third middle one third and the distal one third proximal one third of the bulbous cordis has no special name <coughs> middle sorry middle one third of the bulbous cordis is called as conus and the distal one third of the bulbous cordis is called as truncus arteriosus so middle one third is conus and distal one third is truncus arteriosus and proximal one third of the bulbous cordis has no special na name now uh, what are the structures so there are five dilatations distal one is the truncus arteriosus or the arterial and then the bulbous cordis it has got distal part is conus and proximal one third has no special name and uh, then the primitive ventricle and then primitive atrium and then sinus venosus okay now what are the structures they will develop from uh, these uh, dilatation truncus arteriosus which is the arterial and later there will be formation of a septum here that is called as the spiral septum and it will divide the truncus arteriosus into two parts that is ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk so ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk is formed by truncus arteriosus by division <coughs> and that septum is called as spiral septum now the bulbous uh, <coughs> cord is or the conus that uh, conus conus will form the outflow part this conus will form the outflow part of the uh, both ventricles so conus is forming the outflow part of the right ventricle and uh, left ventricle then coming to the proximal one third of the bulbous cordis this proximal one third of the bulbous cordis will mainly form the right ventricle this proximal one third part of the bulbous cordis will form the right ventricle its a middle part that is conus will form the outflow part of the right ventricle and left ventricle both and truncus arteriosus will divide by a spiral septum and it will give rise to ascending aorta and truncus ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk now <coughs> the junction between pul uh, bulbous cordis and primitive ventricle is called as bulbo ventricular sulcus okay so it will form the uh, there will be bulbo ventricular sulcus or bulbo ventricular groove and uh, as i have said that bulbous proximal part of the bulbous cordis will form the right ventricle mainly and this primitive ventricle mainly forms the left ventricle so we can say it is the junction bulbo ventricular junction is junction between right ventricle and left ventricle so this bulbo ventricular groove will form the iv sulcus so we can say this bulbo ventricular groove will form the iv interventricular sulcus and primitive ventricle will form the mainly left ventricle bulbous cordis proximal one third part will form the right ventricle mainly and its middle part that is conus will form the outflow part of the right ventricle and left ventricle both truncus arteriosus will form the ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk by divide, uh, by a division that is called as spiral septum and bulbo ventricular groove will form the interventricular groove now a uh, junction between primitive ventricle and primitive atrium that is called as av canal av canal it is present between atria and ventricle so it is called as av canal so this is primitive av canal and there will be formation of uh, endocardial cushion from the wall of the um, these and uh, it will lead to division of the av canal into right and left half okay so formation of av canal by at junction of primitive atria and primitive ventricle will be there primitive atrium in the primitive atrium so here is av canal 
here is bulbo-ventricular sulcus now primitive atria it is divided by a septum that is interventricular septum into right atrium and the left atrium so primitive atrium will form the right atria and left atria okay now coming to the sinus venosus it has three parts upper part is the <coughs> body then right horn and the left horn of the sinus venosus and this is the distal end which receives three veins which we'll see later so sinus venosus and uh, atria has junction that is called as sinoatrial junction okay so this is sinoatrial um, junction and here will be the sinoatrial orifice okay now this is body and this right horn will get absorbed into the right atrium later and left horn of the sinus venosus will most of the part will get absorbed or uh, it will disappear and it will uh, the remnant part will be only the coronary sinus okay so <coughs> junction of primitive atrium and sinus venosus is sinoatrial orifice and the body and right horn of the sinus venosus will get absorbed into the right atrium so this part will be the part of the right atrium and uh, left horn of the sinus venosus with three tributaries most of this part will get absorbed into the uh, uh, it will uh, sorry it will get disappear or uh, and only remnant part will be the coronary sinus so all these structure will open into the right atrium coronary sinus and uh, and this uh, part which pa uh, the sinus venosus that has the part body and horn which has been absorbed into the right atrium will form the smooth part of the right atrium a smooth posterior part of the right atrium will be formed by it so this is by the by uh, about the sinus venosus now the cranial uh, arterial end or the cranial end of the heart tube that is uh, truncus arteriosus and uh, here you can see this truncus arteriosus is uh, distally it is continuous with the aortic sac this is truncus arteriosus and distally it is continuous with the aortic sac and if this aortic sac has left horn and the right horn and this is continuous with the this you can see it uh, it is continuous with the respective dorsal aorta and how it is continuous by first arch artery okay so truncus arteriosus which represent the arterial end of the heart tube and uh, each horn it has got two horns and each horn of the aortic sac it is uh, continuous by pharyngeal arch arteries and it will continue with the respective dorsal aorta now the venous end as i have told you that uh, venous and is the uh, sinus venosus okay and it has body and the horns so it has uh, body and the <coughs> horns of the sinus venosus so this uh, right horn and the left horn of the sinus venosus is there and uh, it is receiving three veins vitelli vitelline veins lateral to uh, medial three veins this lateral one is the common cardinal vein middle one is the umbilical vein and medial most one is the vitelline vein this vitelline vein is receiving the blood from the yolk sac umbilical vein is Uh, bringing the oxygenated blood from the placenta and common cardinal cardinal vein is bringing the blood from the whole rest of the body or the from the body wall so vitelline vein is coming from the yolk sac umbilical from the placenta and common cardinal vein is from the body wall and this is the body and then right horn and the left horn of the of the sinus venosus and sinus venosus has uh, a <coughs> it is forming the it has got uh, i have told you that uh, body and uh, right uh, yeah, body and the right horn both will get absorbed into the right atrium 
this whole part will get absorbed into the right atrium and uh, all the three veins uh, will uh, and the left horn will get disappear it will uh, get degenerated and this will this part uh, will remain as only the coronary sinus remnant of the left horn is the coronary sinus and right horn with the body will get absorbed into the sinus venosus so these uh, this is about the heart tube thank you